Hello and welcome to another Raspberry Pi tutorial by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to plug in and start up your Raspberry Pi. I will show you what you need and teach you some basic information about it. I hope you enjoy this tutorial and please subscribe. So, when you get your Raspberry Pi, it will have it be in a box similar to this. I've got mine from RS Components. However, you may have you got yours from Element 14 or maybe another su supplier, depending on where you are. So. Break the security seals, I've already done that because I've already used my Raspberry Pi. Open it up. These are just some safety information, just discard those, don't need them. And then open this foam here. Now your Raspberry Pi will probably just be in an anti-static bag. But because I've opened my Raspberry Pi bef before, I don't have the anti-static bag. So sadly I can't show you what it will look like straight out of the box. But if you do have your anti-static bag on, just take it off. And here you go, you have your Raspberry Pi. Now, just to give you some basic information about it. So, in the centre here you have the CPU, Central Processing Unit, and this is where everything happens. In fact, it's actually the CPU, the GPU, which is the Graphics Processing Unit, and the RAM, all piled on top of one of each other. So as you can see, it's not that thick, but they are all piled up on top of each other. CPU has a 700 megahertz clock speed. Uh, it runs the ARM v6 architecture, which is quite common, quite commonly used with mobile phones, and I believe the processor is the same one that's used in the Amazon Kindle. Now, 256 megs of RAM doesn't sound like a lot, and to be truth be told, it's not. Compared to some high-end gaming PCs and stuff, they have 8 gigs, possibly 16 gigs of RAM. Now. 256 megs of RAM though is perfectly capable amount for a credit card size computer. Now this chip here is LAN chip which is just how the internet works. So I'll just guide you through all of the ports and connectors. This port here is HDMI. This is how your Raspberry Pi will connect to an HDTV. So as you might have seen on the Raspberry Pi website, I'll probably boast that it can do 1080p video, which is full HD, and you can use this as a media center. If you want full HD, you're going to have to connect it via here with an HDMI cable. Sadly, though, I don't have a. I'm not using mine with a HDTV, so I'm going to have to use another type of connection, which I'm going to talk about just in a second. Now, be really careful when when maneuvering the board. Use it on the sh sides mainly if possible and I'd really recommend getting a case that allows you to access it but um, it's not necessary now this is the Ethernet port if you've got model B you will have 10 by 100 Ethernet so this is if you want wired internet if you've got model A then you can probably just use a, a Wi-Fi dongle or if you want wireless internet on model B again you can use a Wi-Fi dongle here, here is the universal serial bus ports, the USBs Two, if you with the Model B or one with the Model A. Sadly, though, I don't have a working USB hub to show you it. If you do have a USB hub, make sure that's powered, because Raspberry Pi only works on five volts. So, if you have an external hard drive, for example, that requires more voltage, your Raspberry Pi won't be able to. It won't be able to give it the voltage, and so it won't work. Sadly. So this is two ports. is just basically enough for mouse and keyboard. Now, down here we have the status LEDs, which I'm going to talk about just in a minute. Now, this is what I'm going to be connecting my display through to. Composite video is the yellow one. This is just what old TVs use, and the connector looks like this, something similar. And this is a 3.5mm audio jack, black thing. This means that you can put headphones into it if you want something really simple, or you can use this to actually access the sound on your monitor. That's just for old connections. Now this is what I do, I've done some tutorials on so far. This is the GPIO pins. These are all male and so you can control some awesome stuff like robots, LEDs, buttons, lots of cool stuff with these. Now, here we have the micro USB slot. It's pretty small. And here's a capacitor which makes sure that there's no spikes in the, the voltage going into it. So be careful 
I've heard this being done quite a few times. You're pushing this whilst trying to get the power cable in, then most likely the capacitor will, for, will just come off. And it's annoying. Apparently, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi can function without it, but I'd I'd rather not try. So just try just handling the board around the edges. Now, here is on the bottom we have the SD card holder and lots of little soldering joints. So the SD card holder is what we're going to be having a look at first. Now, stuff you're going to need. Probably the most important thing that you're going to need is an SD card with an operating system on it. If you don't have an operating system on a 2 gig or larger SD card, I recommend you watching my other video, Preparing an SD. This will just guide you through how to get a, a simple OS onto it really easily. So, I've got a 16 gig one, class 4. It doesn't really matter how big it is as long as it's at least 2 gigs big. So, here we go. Now, make sure that this isn't on lock. Otherwise you won't be able to write data to it. Simply, there's the... There it is. This is how we're going... The SD card reader, I mean. Uh, let's just slide this in here. Again, being careful. So it should go firmly in. It shouldn't fall out. It just looks like this. So, once that's done, your Raspberry Pi shall be a little bit bigger from where the SD card protrudes. But it doesn't matter too much. Now, the last thing I'm going to plug in is power, because we we don't want to power things up when when we might be have connected something wrong. So next thing that I'm going to connect is composite video. If you have HDMI, then just instead of plugging into this port here, just get your HDMI cable and plug into your HDMI TV okay got to exert a bit of force which, which isn't the nicest feeling on quite a little flimsy PC so it should just go in really really firmly and then of course connect it to the back of your TV or wherever now so we've got both of those attached now what we're going to need is mouse and keyboard so there we go, there's a universal serial bus. I'm just using a, a Logitech mouse. Which is pretty generic. If we plug this in here. Top one. And then keyboard, I'm just using a Microsoft Wired keyboard 600. Which is sadly off camera, so I'm not going to show you that. Again, USB. If your keyboard has sort of a round shaped connector, that has like a horseshoe pattern of holes that's what they call a PS2 keyboard and sadly Raspberry Pi doesn't have PS2 inputs so you're not going to be able to connect that old one so best bet is probably to go get a adapter for it or better still buy yourself a new one this is Ethernet this will just go into your router or however you get Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi I mean internet and so we're just going to insert this into the Raspberry Pi with this, the Ethernet port. This one should just go in fairly easily. Probably hear a click like that. And that's just the basic of wiring. As you know, I'm not going to have sound with my Raspberry Pi just to keep simplicity. So now, charger, micro USB should look like this. It needs to be 5 volts and must supply at least 700 milliamps of current. I'm using a Kindle, the official Kindle charger, which provides 5 volts and has 850 milliamps of current. The more milliamps of current that you have, the better. So ideally you should really have a, like a 1 amp one, which is a 1000 milliamps. So connect it. Again, being really careful. Don't break anything on the first boot. As you can see on the state LEDs, they have lit, lighted up. And... When you see the flashing OK and then these come on, that means that your Raspberry Pi is doing something and it's actually reading the SD. So I'm just going to put that down and I'm going to turn on my TV. Up here. Now, as you can see, there's lots of lines flashing across 
a screen. This is called the kernel, and basically it's just your Raspberry Pi starting up, just checking certain things. Now, if you haven't booted up your Raspberry Pi before, you'll probably get Raspberry Pi login. And if you haven't changed the user, it's normally just Pi and Raspberry. I'm using the Raspbian distro, which is based on Debian, as you can see here. But just it doesn't really particularly matter what you use, what distro you use with this tutorial. So type in Raspberry as a password. Press enter. You'll probably get something like this. Now there is now if you want to open up to the the desktop environment, you just type in the command S T A R T. X, start X, and then press enter. Switch through with a few more lines. And then you'll get a desktop. And as you can see, I've changed my desktop image to a wolf. So, this is what your desktop's going to look like if you're using the Raspbian, apart from the, uh, the background image. So, let's just walk you through some of the things. We have the LX terminal, which is just a, a shortcut way of getting back to the, the text based command line as Windows calls it. We have Midori which is just a lightweight internet browser. We have Scratch which is really good simple drag and drop based programming language that's really good if you want to start programming. We have Idle 3 which is Python 3.1.1 I think and this is the newest version of Python in a really good environment and I'd recommend this language this is the one that language that I mainly use. Then we have Idle 2.6.6, which is the older version, which is still commonly used. That's just a folder that I've made. These are the, some default Python, Python games that people have, or that just come with it. Now here's a start menu down here. You can log out, run things, look at your preferences, system tools, the task manager. Again with programming, you've got all Idle, Idle 3, Scratch. Ignore Squeak, you won't need Squeak. That's just that's what Scratch is based on. Internet, so you've got Midori, Midori Private Browsing, and NetSurf, which is another lightweight web browser. So maybe you should use both of them and see which one suits you best. Education, again, scratch and squeak there. Now, Debian reference, if you're new to Debian, then this is really good. So just click on that and it'll open up with a, a, Debian, a whole Debian reference. This uses a file, this is a file manager, which just shows a really nice graphics way of showing all your files. Image viewer, view your images easily. Leafpad, which is like a simple text editor. Don't be expecting Microsoft Office or anything similar to that, though. Really simple. LX Terminal uses the command line. Now, opens a terminal as a root user, which is what root terminal does. So, if you're rest if you're restricted to, if you're not a administrator, then you use root terminal. And you don't need to worry about X Archiver, for just for the moment, if you're a beginner. So that's just how to get your Raspberry Pi booted up and hopefully from this you can then start programming away or doing whatever you like with it. I hope this tutorial has been clear enough, if it hasn't please comment below asking any questions or email me at the guy at gmail.com. Please view my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. I'll be making some new videos soon, mainly around the GPIO ports, building up again to my robot project in which I'll try to build a two-wheeled robot. If you have any suggestions on stuff that you'd like me to do next please don't hesitate to tell me. I'm always open so if there's any project that you'd like me to try out before you try it then feel free, fire away. Okay, thanks for viewing and make sure to watch my other videos.